This video covers a review of simplifying expressions using properties of exponents. Here we see an example of a problem where we're asked to simplify an expression involving exponents. And on the right side of the screen here, we have a list of all the common properties of exponents that are typically used in situations like this. We're not going to need all of these for this problem but we're going to keep this list handy so that we can look up the things we need. And this is probably a list of properties you need to memorize in order to do these kinds of problems successfully. So let's take a look at what we're working on. I have the expression negative 4x to the fifth quantity squared, and I need to simplify that. So let's take a look at some of the things that we could do. And first of all, we see that we have things multiplied together inside parentheses raised to a power and that looks like this property right here. So if we apply that property it's telling us basically that we can distribute the exponent to each of the factors inside of the parentheses. If we do that I can think of this as negative 4 squared times x to the fifth squared. Now negative 4 squared is easy to simplify. That's positive 16. And then I have x to the 5 in parentheses raised to the 2. So again, I've got a situation where there are two exponents involved. And that looks like this property. This property is telling me that if I have an exponential expression which the entire thing is raised to another power, then I can just multiply the two powers together. So in that case, instead of writing x to the fifth quantity squared, I can just write x to the fifth times 2. And 5 times 2 is 10. So a simplified version of this expression is 16x to the tenth. Let's look at another example. This one looks a little bit more complicated, but we're going to follow the same general idea. We're going to try to use the list of properties we see on the right column to help us simplify. First of all, I have 3x squared y to the fourth multiplied by an expression that's raised to an exponent 2. And so just like in the previous problem, I see things multiplied together inside parentheses and an exponent outside the parentheses. I want to distribute that exponent. Now this property makes it look like you're only able to distribute that exponent when you have two factors inside parentheses. But in fact, you can distribute it to three or four or however many factors are inside the parentheses as long as they're all multiplied together. So if I do that, let me leave the first quantity alone for now. And the second quantity I'll rewrite as negative 4 squared, x squared, y cubed squared. And then just like on the previous problem, I can rewrite negative 4 squared as 16. x squared is already in good shape. y cubed squared, that's again going to be using this property. So I can multiply the two exponents together. 3 times 2 is 6. Great. Now let's combine the factors we see here that have the same base. So for example, these two expressions both have a base of x. I want to get those closer together. These two expressions both have a base of y, so let's get those closer together. And let's bring the constants 3 and 16 together. So I'll multiply those first. 3 times 16 is 48. Then I have x squared times x squared and y to the fourth times y to the sixth. Now notice that even though I had parentheses here, really everything in the previous line was just being multiplied together. So that's why I was able to change the order because it's just multiplication. When you're just doing multiplication, you can rearrange the order however you like. Okay, now I've got x squared times x squared. 
So I have two expressions that have the same base, and I want to combine their exponents. That's where this rule comes in. So a to the m times a to the n. In this case, we're looking at x squared times x squared. This rule is telling me I can just combine them by adding the two exponents. So if I do that, I have x to the 2 plus 2. And do the same thing with the y's, y to the 4 plus 6. And if we simplify that, x to the 2 plus 2 is x to the 4. y to the 4 plus 6 is y to the 10. And there's our answer. This question will let us use a few more of the properties. First of all, notice that we have a negative exponent. How do we deal with a negative exponent? Well, this property here tells us that we can just think of a ne negative exponent as a reciprocal. So the quantity 3x squared y over y cubed z squared raised to the negative 2 is just a reciprocal of 3x squared y over y cubed z squared quantity squared. Okay, now here's another way to write that that's actually going to make it easier. Because this is going to end up being a fraction in the denominator, 1 over a fraction is just the reciprocal of that fraction. So to make things easier, we'll just rewrite this as y cubed z squared over 3x squared y quantity squared. Next I have a fraction being raised to a power. We can see a property that tells us how to deal with that. We just use that exponent on each of the numerator and the denominator of our fraction. So this is the same as y cubed z squared quantity squared over 3x squared y quantity squared. And then finally I want to simplify by getting rid of the remaining parentheses. I have y cubed z squared quantity squared, two things multiplied together and then raised to a power. So that looks like this property. So I can write that as y cubed squared. But let's combine that also with this property at the same time. y cubed squared is really going to be y to the sixth and z squared squared is really going to be z to the fourth. Then in the denominator, I'll distribute the exponent. 3 squared is 9. x squared squared will be x to the fourth, and y squared. Now there's one more thing we can do here, and that's to simplify by canceling powers of y. So remember y squared is really y times y y to the sixth is really six y's multiplied together. y times y times y times y times y times y. So if we cancel two y's in the numerator with two y's in the denominator, we won't have to write any y's at all in the denominator. We'll just have 9x to the fourth there. And doing that, canceling the two factors of y from the denominator with two of the factors of y in the numerator, leaves four factors of y in the numerator. And there's our simplified expression. One more. We're going to simplify this expression square root of 4 k to the eighth m to the sixth. Now this looks a little bit different because of that square root. And we we're talking about properties of exponents. What does a square root have to do with that? Well, in order to deal with a problem like this, what you want to remember is that a square root can also be expressed as an exponent, in particular a one-half power. So if we're looking at the square root of 4k to the eighth m to the sixth, we can think of that as 4k to the eighth m to the sixth raised to a one-half power. And then we've got a quantity inside parentheses multiplied together raised to a power. So we use this again. 
with three factors. So 4 raised to the 1 half times k to the 8 raised to the 1 half times m to the 6 raised to the 1 half. And then 4 to the 1 half, well, that's going to be the square root of 4, which is 2. k to the 8th to the 1 half, I've got a, an exponent in parentheses raised to an exponent. It's this property again. So that's the same as k to the 8 times 1 half. And similarly, the last factor is m to the 6th, uh, 6 times 1 half. And if you simplify those exponents, 8 times 1 half is 4, 6 times 1 half is 3, and so this quantity can be written as 2k to the 4th, m to the 3rd.